How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at diving into spanning tree protocol. We've taken a look at some of the other capabilities like VLANs and trunking, and as well as VTP. So now we're gonna start diving into spanning tree protocol and all of its glory. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna whiteboard a little bit here and talk about how spanning tree protocol comes into play. So for those of you that are familiar with spanning tree protocol, awesome. If you are not, this is gonna be kind of a crash course into spanning tree protocol and things like that. So if we have a couple of switches here, right? We'll draw out just two initially. And I'm gonna have PC1 here. I'm gonna draw PC2 over here. And PC1 and PC2 are both gonna to connect to their respective switches. This will be switch one, this will be switch two. Between these two switches, we have a crossover cable, in this case, because we have like ports on, on either side of the link, so we need a crossover cable. Now, do I need spanning tree protocol here? So, STP, it's either yes or no, and the answer is no. We don't need um, spanning tree protocol here because we don't have a single link, right? Because when I send a BPDU, or a spanning tree hello out this way, and it's received in over here, the only place for it to respond is out the same interface and to be received back in like so, right? Now, what happens if we added a link? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say if we added a link, would spanning tree protocol be needed? Yes or no? The answer is yes, we would need Spanning tree protocol. The reason why we would need spanning tree protocol is because when a BPDU is sent out this way and received in, right, it can be sent back out this interface as well as sent back out this interface. And then that means that we could send a hello out, it can be received back in and then sent back this way and then we get into a never ending loop, right? And then boom, link goes down, no bueno. So instead of doing that, we leverage the different capabilities of Spanish Tree Protocol to block ports. But before I get into that, what's a BPDU? Well, a BPDU is a bridge protocol data unit. And what a BPDU basically is, is it's a hello. So this guy's gonna send out a BPDU, this guy's gonna send out a BPDU, uh, both interfaces. And that's gonna be per VLAN. So you send a BPDU out each trunk link for every VLAN. You do that because you need to determine whether or not you're gonna have a loop in the network. So how could a loop be created? Well, I just talked about it. You send a hello out each interface and that hello is received in right? And then that hello is sent back out. This hello is sent back out and it's received back in on both interfaces. This causes a loop. So you send it out, it comes back in, it comes back out. So over and over and over again. It's a vicious cycle. So what we do is we leverage the ability of blocking a particular port. So we block a port to prevent the forwarding of BPDUs. BPDU is actually a combination of a couple bits of information. It's gonna have the priority. It's gonna have the bridge ID. And what that basically means is you're gonna have the bridge ID. The bridge ID is gonna be the MAC address of the switch that you're sending and receiving traffic from and you have the priority value. By default, this is 32768. When you take the bridge ID, so the MAC address, and you take the VLAN ID, you take this information, the MAC address itself doesn't change. This is uh, unchanged, right? You take the VLAN ID right here, let's say 10 for example, you take that and you tack it onto this value right here, 32768. So 10 being the VLAN ID, also known as the system 
I'm sorry, the extended sys ID or system ID, the extended system ID. You take this value right here and you add it to this value right there. So it's three, two, seven, seven, eight. This becomes your priority value and you also tie that to the MAC address. So because the MAC address can't be modified, if this guy here is A and this guy here is three, which MAC address is considered to be lower? Well, this guy right here, right? Because A is lower than, I'm sorry, three is lower than A when it comes to hexadecimal. So in case you're not sure exactly how that works, in order of preference, you have zero through nine and then A through F. That's hex and that is how a MAC address is written. It's written with hex values. And it's, le it's read from left to right. So if I have 0, 0, 0, 0 0.1013 AF1C, and I have 0, 0, 0, 0.0001.001.AF1C, AF one c which MAC address is lower? This guy, right? Because zero right here is lower than one here. That's basically how you would correlate that. So because the MAC address can't be modified, the only thing we can affect when it comes to Spanish tree protocol is going to be the priority value. So because we can only affect the priority value, this is going to help us determine who the root bridge is in the network. And you might say, well, what's the root bridge got to do with anything? The root bridge basically is just the center of the universe. It's the central portion of the control plane when you're dealing with Spanish tree protocol. So when we talk about that, we have to take into consideration what's actually happening behind the scenes. So let me go ahead and clear the screen. We take these two switches again, right? And we need to determine which port's gonna get blocked. So if I take A, this is, I'm sorry, if I take switch one and I take switch two, and the, let's say the MAC address across the board here is three, and this one here is two. What will end up happening is the switch with the lowest MAC address, so the guy on the right over here, switch two, he will have the lower of the two MAC addresses. Therefore, because he's got the lower MAC address, he will become the root bridge. This is just how normal Spanish tree protocol figure out who the root bridge process works election is. The lower MAC address wins, regardless of the priority. So if the priori priority is the same between a couple of switches, then you're going to automatically default to the, I'm sorry, if the, if the MAC address, since the, MAC, uh, the priority values are gonna be the same, three, two, seven, six, eight out of the gate. So because those values are the same, you need a differentiator. So the, the initial determinator, differentiator is going to be the MAC address. But if you don't want switch two to be the root bridge, you want switch one to be the root bridge. You can affect that. But the only way to affect that is by modifying the priority. Simple as that. Now, what will end up happening is since this guy is the root bridge, these ports right here will go into what they call designated. They'll go into designated forwarding. These ports over here will either become, we'll say this is port 10 and this is port 11. This port right here, because it's the lowest port on the non, on the switch that's the non root bridge. So this port right here will become the root port because sorry, it's supposed to be a P. This guy will become the root port because it's the lowest interface on that switch. This switch, this port right here will become the blocking port because it's not the root port, it's gotta go into blocking. So what'll end up happening is communication between the two switches will ride over this guy right here. Let me go ahead and draw this in green. This port right here is the one that's gonna be used to send and receive traffic. That's where that's gonna come into play. Now there are other options available to us in terms of the different Spanish tree uh, modes, the the roles that an interface can be placed into, the states that can be gone through, a bunch of other information that's available as well. So when it comes to Spanish tree protocol, you've got three versions. You've got PVST plus or 
for those of you that are out there that have been doing this for a while, 802.1D, you've got RPVST plus, which is going to be 802.1W, and then you've got MST, or multiple Spanish Street protocol. This is going to be 802.1S. Okay. Now, what's the difference between these guys? Well, there's a clear line in the sand here. PBST relies on timer values. So, for example, timer values are going to be used for blocking. We're going to have learning. Or let me put in listening first. Listening. Learning. And you're going to have actually max age in here as well. Max age and blocking are pretty much the same thing. This is a 20 second block of time. This is a 20 second block of time. Max age is just there in the event that there's a failure. You're going to wait 20 seconds to see if that failure will automatically clear itself. Or if you need to go into listening and learning. Listening and learning are both 15 seconds. And they're used to listen on the network to see what's going on and then learn MAC addresses before everything goes on. This means between 30 and 50 seconds of time between convergence uh, from when the switch environment is not converged to the point in time when the switch is converged. So like uh, an eternity, a really, really long period of time. So in order to move away from that, we leverage rapid, rapid PBST as well as MST. Now our uh, rapid PBST does not rely on the timer values that we have here. It relies on what they call an acknowledgement and a, what's the other term? The agreement, we'll just say agreement. Pro I'm sorry, proposal and agreement, my, my fault. Uh, proposal and uh, agreement. So basically what that means is I'm going to go from one switch to the next and I'm going to basically say I need to figure out what the environment looks like. So I'm going to block ports until I figure out that you are not connected to another switch that could potentially cause a loop. They go back and forth to get that worked on. The big benefit of RPBST Plus in a nutshell is its speed of convergence. So you're looking at between uh, three to five seconds versus 30 to 50 seconds. So it's way, way faster. Now the only drop, uh, there are several drawbacks to PBST as well. It, it's faster, right? But it doesn't really make the network more optimal other than being faster to converge. So remember we were talking about PBST when you have, if you have a number of VLANs created and they're writing a trunk link that for every trunk link you have, you're going to be sending VLANs over that trunk link. You're going to be sending a hello, a BPDU hello, over each one of those links, which is going to drive up the amount of control plane processing that has to happen on the other switches. That does not go away with PBST, or with Rapid Spanish Tree Protocol. So because RSTP still relies on timers, or because it still relies on that Every VLAN must send its own BPDU. It's not as scalable. When we talk about MST, MST takes advantage of a couple of different features. It takes advantage of the revision number, the and the instance number. The instance number is going, so you have a revision number, and then you have the instance. By default, you have one instance out of the gate, which is instance zero. Instance zero is going to actually take all the VLANs. So one through 4,094, for example. Where if I want to move something out of instance zero and create my own instance, I can do that. And then what I do is I create instance one, and then I tie a number of VLANs to that. So let's say we, we join one through 100 here. Well, what I, what I end up doing is when I create that, 
instead of sending 100 BPDUs out of every trunk link for all the VLANs that are riding over that trunk link, I send one BPDU out that trunk link to all the other switches running MST as well. And that allows me to dramatically reduce the amount of forwarding that's going on inside of the network. So really at the end of the day, as you can see that Spanish tree protocol can be a little intimidating, especially when you first get into it. The idea is that when it comes to configuring Spanish tree protocol, yes, it's important to understand the differences between the different modes and that type of stuff. But I'll, rather than go into a deep dive on the actual theory, I'm gonna show you some stuff on the command line and show you basically how it works that way. So let's go ahead and actually dive into, into that real quick. Go ahead and get out of the way. And back up here, we're gonna go ahead and pull up the config. So here on switch 35, since we're here at the bottom portion here, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way. What I wanna do is in these switches here, let me go on switch 34 and make sure that the connection to switch 35 is up. So uh, show IP interface brief. Let me go ahead and enable gig two interface, gig two, no shut. Bring that guy online. Okay, so once he comes online, we'll be in good shape. What you wanna do here in this particular case is from a Switch 36 perspective, you wanna say, okay, show VLAN brief. I have one VLAN, VLAN 100. Let's do a show Spanish tree protocol for VLAN 100, right? And what we're gonna see, go ahead and scoot this up just a little bit so it's easy for you guys to see everything. What you're gonna see is that we're running rapid Spanish tree protocol out of the gate. So on newer versions of code, you will see RSTP out of the gate. And what we're gonna see is that currently that gig 00 is our root port. So gig 00 points to switch 34 and gig 01 is our, is also in forwarding mode. He's a designated port. So he's forwarding. This switch is not the root bridge for VLAN 100. As a matter of fact, I would go out port one, gig zero zero, in order to reach the root bridge. If we look at switch 34, and we do a show spanning tree VLAN 100, we're gonna see that this bridge is the root, but if we look at why this bridge is the root, look at the MAC address, 22 in the middle portion there. If we look here on switch 36, we can see that this guy right here is 24. This is the local information. If we look on switch 35, we do a show Spanning tree VLAN 100, we can see this guy here is 23. So because the MAC address is on switch 34 is the lowest, switch 34 becomes the root, the root switch, the root bridge in this particular design. So we can affect that. We can make switch 35 the root bridge. We just have to go to global config and type in spanning tree VLAN 100 root primary, right? So if I go back over here to switch 34 and hit the up arrow, you'll see that this switch is no longer the root bridge and that the root port is located out gig 01. Gig 01 is pointing me towards switch 36. If I look at switch 35 right here and I do show spanning tree for VLAN 100, I can see this bridge is the root, right? and gets the job done. That's basically how you configure the root bridge. Now, when we look back at switch 36, and we hit the up arrow, remember that my root port was pointing towards gig 00, if I hit the up arrow, now my root port is pointing towards gig 01. And that's basically how that comes into play. So that's that's it really. I mean, there's not a whole lot more to it than that. Spanish tree protocol is very, very simple. It's simply designed to block layer two broadcasts and prevent loops. So that, so now that we have the updates pushed and we can see that the upstream up uplinks have changed. Now, one thing that I do wanna point out is that because the uplink has changed, now the forwarding direction will change. So what will end up happening is the, um, in this case here, nothing's blocked, right? But if I go over to switch 34, I'm sorry, yeah, switch 34, because he's not the root bridge anymore. 
you'll notice that on here, let me do a quick do show interface trunk. Oh, uh, do a show interface trunk. You'll notice that um, Gig01, and that the reason why that we don't see any block ports is because the connection between switch 34 and switch 35 is not configured as a trunk link. Let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. We're going to go to global config, interface, gig0 slash 2, switch port, trunk, and cap.1q, switch port mode of trunk. Same thing on switch 35, interface, gig0 slash 2, switch port, trunk, and cap.1q, switch port mode of trunk. Okay, we go back over here and we hit the up uh, and do a show spanning tree for spanning tree for VLAN 100 that gig02 will now become the root port and the other two ports will become blocking ports from switch 34's perspective because it doesn't need to forward traffic out that particular link, right? We look at switch 35, since we are the root port and we do a show spanning tree, VLAN 100, all of my ports are currently in designated forwarding mode. If I look at switch 36, doesn't change a whole lot, right? Because he's not really affected by that. But if I go to switch 34, for example, and I look at this, I'm in the role, now they're, now they're no longer blocking because now Spanish Tree Protocol has figured itself out. We can see that we are forwarding for VLAN 100 on gig zero slash two, he's the root, and now we're blocking, or we're, we're designated forward on these ports. So we're in good shape, which is a little unorthodox because we should be blocking on one of these ports. Switch 36. Okay, switch 36 has taken it. So what's happening, switch 36 got the block, which is what I was looking for. When we look at this config, we can see gig00 is the, in the role of alternate in the state of blocking. The status of or the state it currently is blocking. The reason why is because when we take a look at how the the directionality of the traffic flows, right now switch 36 is the root port currently is gig 01. This is the root port, right? And gig 02 is in designated forwarding because it does not connect upstream to a switch. But this port right here is an alternate, which means that it's blocking, right? So in, in a case like this, we talk about how the forwarding comes into play, the traffic will forward this way, right? Because we have a blocking port. Now, if something happened to this link right here, this link goes down, then gig01 will no longer be available and gig00 will automatically transition over to the process of root port and begin forwarding. So let's actually go take a look at that. Let's go back over here and on switch 36, we're gonna debug Spanish tree protocol. Spanish tree, we're gonna type in, we will say events and I'll put in here MS, no, I don't wanna do MSTP. We'll put in BPD, no, let's just do, let's do that for right now. So what I'm gonna go do Actually, let me do a config. Config changes. See if there's a configuration debugging. So what I'm gonna go do is on switch 35, I'm gonna come up here, go to global config and type in interface gig zero slash one. I'm gonna shut the port down. So switch 36 should detect that, that a link failure does occur and it does. And you notice that when we do this real quick. We see the configuration going back and forth. We do a show Spanish tree protocol. Now that port is now forwarding. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do an un debug all. What I want you guys to pay attention to is up here. If we look at this output, now we can see that on when we did the transition, we can see that gig01 expired. Gig01 gig is now in, de, is now designated. It's a transmitting proposal. It, it expired 
So it's going to go ahead and it's uh, gig zero zero is is now root port. Gig zero one blocked by reroute. Gig zero one is now designated. It goes back and forth until it figures out that gig zero one is actually not able to do its job. So we can see that it's um, it expired again, and now it should be in blocking mode. Which is well now it should be. Um, on the on this side here, it's in designated forwarding because it isn't receiving any information on the switch 35 side. But if we do show spanning tree VLAN 100, that port isn't actually up, so it doesn't do anything, right? It might as well be in uh, blocking mode for all we care. But by changing the upstream switch, we can see that through the debugs that it worked out exactly the way we intended it to. Meaning, when we looked at the debugs, we can see that when the connection goes down on the connection to switch 35, that it detected the error and it was just like, okay, um, it detects the error and says, okay, well, I'm not receiving any hellos back, so I'm going to assume that you're down. I'm going to reroute and send traffic out gig zero zero. So now on switch 36, if we look at this. We're going to send traffic out gig zero zero. So now the new traffic flow is like this. So I'll change colors real quick. Now the new traffic flow is going this direction. Now the reality of it is, from a layer two perspective, we don't notice it, right? We would have to literally trace the path manually, or look at utilization at the link level and see how many bytes are being sent and received. So that would come into play. But right now, from a layer two perspective from iOS 17 to XR23, they're still gonna be able to reach each other because of the fact that the connectivity is up and, up and operational. So if we were to do a quick test on that to validate that logic, go to XRV23, we go ahead and log in and do a ping to 10.100.1.17, I'm still able to ping it. And I'm still able to ping it because I still have forwarding capability throughout the back, the, the back end of the network. And that, that's pretty much it. So we've set the root bridge. We made sure it works the way we needed to. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a brief configuration of multiple span tree protocol so we can see what that looks like real quick. It's not that much of a stretch. So what I'm gonna go do is on switch 34, I'm going to go to global config and type in span tree mode is MST. And then I'm gonna type in spanning tree MST configuration. Underneath here, I'm gonna set the revision number to be uh, one. And then at the instance, and I'm going to create instance one, and I'm gonna tie VLAN 100 to this instance, okay? Exit out, there we go. Do the same thing here, do show history. So I'm gonna basically do the same thing. I'm gonna grab all these lines of config right here and dump them on switch 35 and 36 respectively. Just like that. Now we go back to switch 34 and we look at the show spanning tree for VLAN 100 for example. Let's look at, um, in this case here, we have to look at the uh, MST instance, uh, yeah, the instance of one. We look at this, VLAN 100 is mapped to this. You'll notice the cost value is 20,000. This gives us a little bit more granularity to determine where we're gonna send traffic. And this particular switch, it happens to be the root for MST one, switch 34. If I look at switch 35 and do show, let me go ahead and jump out of global config real quick show spanning tree for VLAN 100. We can see that MSTP is being used, 20,000 is the cost. So we see that that's working the way that we needed to as well. So we do a show spanning tree, MST1. Same, a similar output, but this way here, it tells me who the root bridge is. This MAC address is currently the root. Or I'm sorry, this is my local bridge. This MAC address is the root. And everybody's happy. Right, we can see that everything's working the way that we need it to. Now, the cool thing about this is when we do this configuration, we're sending one BPDU per for all the VLANs instead of one BPDU per VLAN. 
So it makes it a lot more efficient than the control plane. That's basically a multiple span tree protocol. Is there more to it than that? There is. But I'm going to leave all of you to read the documentation. This is more of a CCMP geared course and series. So that's where I'm gonna leave that. So that's basically multiple span tree protocol in a nutshell. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video and I'll catch all of you in the next video.